Welcome back. In the last uh, few classes, we looked at Kummer extensions, and I also in the last class indicated how Kummer extensions are going to be useful to us because they are quite close to being uh, radical extensions, which is of interest to us later on. So, except that there is one assumption that you have to make that the field contains a primitive nth root of unity. So, to resolve that wrinkle, we have to learn about cyclotomic extensions. Okay? So, this is going to be the topic for one or two videos now. Cyclotomic extensions. So, in this uh, part, we are going to formally define what primitive roots or nth roots of unity are and also prove some facts about them. Okay, so, as before, we are going to stick uh, fix a positive integer and we are going to assume that f is a field satisfying the our standing assumption. Let f be a field that satisfies this condition star which is that characteristic of f is 0 or if characteristic of f is positive then uh, uh, p does not divide n right. So, p does not divide n. Okay, so, this is a standard uh, assumption. So, in this case, we are going to be interested in, we, we are interested in the polynomial this. Okay. So, by assumption, this is separable, this is separable, meaning e, that this polynomial and its uh, derivative have no common roots. So, this is assumption star. So, let k be the splitting field of then k over f is galva. Right? So, our goal is to understand a little bit about what kind of uh, Galva group it can have. It can very well be non cyclic, but we will show that it has to be abelian always. Okay? So, first goal I mean one goal is that show that it is abelian. Uh, so, this is a definition for you and a, a finite extension. K over f is abelian if k over f is galva and the galva group is abelian. Okay, one of the achievements of galva theory is to connect field theory to group theory. So, any adjective that you have in groups can be now applied to field extensions because galva groups of those field extensions are groups. So, cyclic extension is an extension which is galva to begin with because the association between groups and fields field extensions works best when you have a galva extension. So, a galva extension is cyclic if the galva group if the uh, if it is galva of course, but the galva group is cyclic if it is if the galva group is abelian we say that it is an abelian extension. So, in other words so k over f is in a, is an abelian extension with this definition. Okay, and we remark that k over f is not in general cyclic. Okay, take k f to be q and n to be 8. Okay, so, we saw earlier that Galois group of q, I mean k which is the Galois uh, the splitting field of this is z mod 2 cross z mod 2. Okay. So, in general it is not a cyclic extension like a Kummer extension, but nevertheless it's, it is an abelian extension. So, remember that uh, k over f is a radical extension because you are you are attaching an nth root in this case nth root of 1. Okay. So, the goal is to prove this, but before that let me prove a nice result which which I which is sort of important in field theory and which I have implicitly 
used several times before. So, K and F are as before, right. So, F is a field which has this property star, K is the splitting field of the polynomial x power n minus 1. The roots of x power n minus 1 in K form a cyclic subgroup of the multiplicative group. Okay. So, this proof in fact follows from a general result. So, which I will write now. Let f be any field, let k be any field So, just for the purpose of this proposition forget the entire picture. So, here k is any field and let g be a finite subgroup multiplicative subgroup of course of k star the non-zero elements of k this is under multiplication finite is important. So, then g is cyclic. Okay, so, this is a fundamental result in uh, field theory and it, it has several proofs. I will give you one proof modulo one fact which may be I can do in a problem session later. So, let G be an abelian group. Let us take two elements in G such that order of x is m and order of y is n. So, this is a purely group theoretic statement. So, you have an element of order m, an element of order n. Then there exists an element z in G such that order of z is the LCM of m and n. Okay. So, this is true for an abelian group. Okay. Not true if G is not abelian. Okay, for example, S3. S3 has an order 2 element as well as an order 3 element, but LCM of 2 and 3 is 6, but S3 of course cannot contain an order 6 element because it is not cyclic. Okay, so, this is a general fact and I will leave this as an exercise uh, and we will do this later if we have time. Let us use this theorem. Certainly, G is, uh, so coming back to the proof of uh, our proposition, apply this fact. It is a fairly easy fact to prove just straightforward. Okay. Apply this fact to G in note that G is abelian because a field of course is ab I mean multiplication in a field is abelian. Now, let us take n to be max orders of elements of G. Remember G is a finite group by hypothesis. So, it is you list all the elements look at their orders that is a collection of positive integers you take n. So, claim is okay. So, claim is that G is in fact of order n. So, we will prove this in the following way. So, let us take so claim in fact is order of A divides n for all A and G. So, the proof of this claim is follows. So, let us say order of A is small n and order of B is capital N. Because capital N is the order of some element, there is a B such that order of B is capital N. So, then by the fact there exists C in G such that order of C is LCM of N and N. Okay. So, but then LCM of n and n is greater than or equal to n, right? Because LCM is the least common multiple. So, it is a common multiple of capital N. So, hence it is greater than or equal to n. So, but capital N is the maximum order. So, LCM of m and n is sorry n and n is n, but that is to say that n divides n because small n divides its LCM which is capital N. So, small n divides capital N. Hence, so the claim is proved. Hence, a power n is 1 for all a in g. 
because order of a divides n so a power n is 1 for all a in g that means every element now we are going to bring in the field so far it's a group of course not every group is cyclic so we have to use the fact that this group sits inside a field somehow so every element of g is a root <coughs> is a root of x power n minus 1 right but the number of roots of x power n minus 1 in k is greater than or equal to n or less than or equal to n. So, a polynomial of degree n cannot have more than n roots. So, this implies the order of g is less than or equal to n because every element of g is a root. So, the set of roots has cardinality less than or equal to n means order of g is less than or equal to n. On the other hand, order of g must be greater than n because n is an element of an order ele, order of an element in g. The order of the group is always at least equal to the order of at least order of any given element in this. So, order is order of the group is at least n. So, that means order of group is equal to n and g is equal to b. So, g is cyclic. Okay. So, we have proved this general fact that a finite subgroup of the multiplicative group of any field is cyclic. So, in particular the roots of this polynomial form a cyclic group. So, I will tell you in a minute why it is a group to begin with. Okay. So, that and uh, as I said this fact here uses the fact that because the roots in a field are at most the degree not in general ok. So, now to finish the proof of the lemma note that roots of x power n minus 1 forms a group this is trivial because 1 is there say u 1 is in u because 1 power n is 1 and if alpha and beta are in u that means alpha and alpha in u implies alpha n. So, it is a group it is a finite group implies u in k cross implies u is cyclic. Okay, so, this completes the proof of the lemma which says that the roots of x power n minus 1 in k form a cyclic group of k star. Okay, so, now definition a generator of u is called so u n if you wish is called a primitive nth root of unity. Okay. This is equivalent to, so zeta is a primitive nth root of unity if and only if order of zeta is n or, or sorry yeah. So, order of zeta is n because order of u n is 1 right n right because it is a separable polynomial there are exactly n roots of unity in k out of which a prim primitive roots will have order n. Okay. So, that means zeta i equal to 1 and i positive implies n divides i. Okay. So, this is the condition that we mentioned in the class when we talked about Kummer extensions. Okay, so, this is about primitive roots. So, I just wanted to do this in detail so that you are uh, um, comfortable with the notion of roots of primitive roots of unity. So, now let us continue. So, roots of nth roots unity in k 
which I called u n if you wish, are 1 zeta, zeta square, zeta cube, zeta n minus 1 for any primitive nth root. So, once you get hold of a primitive nth root, its powers will give you all the nth roots. But which of these are primitive? So, take a zeta i, when is this primitive? Any nth root of unity is of the form zeta i, when is this primitive? Of course, it is primitive when i is equal to 1 because that is zeta. It is not primitive when i equal to 0. What about zeta square? So, now this depends on the order n and how i is related to n. This is an easy statement. Right? So, this is an important fact. check this ok. This is easy as I said because this is a group theory statement really. Okay. This is a group theory statement because you have a cyclic group generated by zeta. If zeta square generates it that means zeta square, zeta power 4, zeta power 6 and so on also generate it. That means 2 and n have to be co prime. Okay. This uses the fact that order of zeta i is um, ok. So, it is yeah. So, maybe I, I do not remember the exact statement to write here, but order of zeta square will be n I mean so it, it will be less than n if and only if 2 and n have a uh, common factor. So, I think I will attempt to do this order of zeta i will be n divided by LCM of or GCD of n and i. So, I think this is the correct statement. If the GCD is 1, then order is 1, order is n divided by 1 which is n, otherwise it will be strictly less than n. Okay? So, check this. This is just a simple calculation because zeta i power this will be 1 because it will be n times something and zeta i power anything less will not be 1. Okay. So, that means the number of primitive roots. So, the number of primitive nth roots of unity is equal to number of i such that i is positive and less than n and i and n are co prime. Okay. So, these are number of positive integers less than n that are co prime to n. This is called usually denoted by phi n. This name is Euler totient function. Okay. So, this is easy. So, this is for example, phi of 1 is 1, phi of 2 is 1, phi of 3 is 1, 2 are co prime. So, both of them. So, phi of 2, 3 is 2, phi of 4 is also 2 because 1 and 3, phi of 5 is 4 and so on. So, in general phi of a prime number is p minus 1 because every integer will be a will be co prime to every integer less than p minus 1 will be co prime to p. So, more generally so, if n is an integer which has this prime decomposition p power r 1, uh, we, we will not need this. I am just writing this because this is something that you may find useful sometimes. I do not need brackets here. Okay, so, I am going to use this fact that number of roots of unity is phi n. The formula for phi n is not relevant for us. Okay. Okay, so, just before I state the main theorem that I want to do in this class, 
let me just give you some examples. So, let us take f to be q for simplicity. What are uh, primit so let us denote u n by set of roots of unity complex nth roots of unity. Okay. So, for n equal to 1 u n is of course, 1 and primitive are 1 primitive I will write here. For n equal to 2 u so u 2 is 1 minus 1 and primitive is just 1 n equal to 3 you have 1 omega omega square and primitive are omega and omega square. For n equal to 4 you have 1 i minus i minus 1 primitive are just 1 my i and minus i okay, and so on. So, these are the and this remember phi of 1 is 1, phi of 2 is 1, phi of 3 is 2 confirmed by 2 of them, phi of 4 is 2 confirmed by this and similarly you have 4 primitive fifth roots of unity. Okay, so, this is just to give you a basic idea of what primitive roots of unity are. Now, I am going to and the key observation I want to emphasize again is that uh, primitive nth roots are given you fix a primitive nth root zeta other primitive nth roots will be zeta power i where i and n are coprime. Okay. Now, using that I want to prove the standard theorem here. So, remember our setup f is any field Okay, so maybe our th theorem I will write down because that is a good way to capture all the notation. So, let n be a positive integer, let f be a field satisfying star meaning it is either characteristic 0 or its characteristic is positive, but does not divide n. Let k be the splitting field of x power n minus 1 over f, then there is a group homomorphism phi from Galois group of k over f to z mod n z star. So, recall that z mod n z star is the multiplicative group multiplicative group of integers of I mean u of integers co prime to n modulo n. Okay, so, that is somewhat I mean it is statement is not compactly written, but you take z mod n z and look at all the units in that group in that ring. Okay. So, units multiplicative units in that ring. So, those which admit um, inverses. So, this is i bar where i and n are co prime right and that is a group under multiplication. So, because 1 is there and if you multiply 2 units you get a third another unit inverse of a unit is a unit and so on. So, z mod 2 z star is just 1 z mod 3 z star is 1 bar 2 bar. So, that is cyclic and is isomorphic to z mod 2 z. Okay. z mod 3 z 4 z star is 1 bar 3 bar and this is isomorphic to z mod 2 z also, but z mod 8 z star. So, I, I do not want to spend too much time, but you can see that this is 1 bar. 2 is not co prime to 8, 3 is co prime to 8, 4 is not, 5 is, 6 is not, 7 is. Okay, and this you can check, this is a group of order 2, 4, but 3 square is 1 because 3 square is 9, which is 1 mod 8, 5 square is 1 mod 8, 7 square is 1 mod 8. Okay, so, this is z mod 2z. Okay, now, let us come back to the proof statement. So, there is a, there is an injective group homomorphism, I forgot a key word here. 
injective group homomorphism from Galois group to Z mod NZ star. I think that's all, yeah. So let's prove this. So let sigma be in the Galois group. Okay, the proof is fairly straightforward. It is somewhat like the theorems we proved on Kummer extensions. So let zeta be a primitive nth root of unity in K. K is a splitting field of x power n minus 1. We have so far proved in this class that those roots form a cyclic group, all the roots of x power n minus 1. By the way, x power n minus 1 is a special polynomial which has this property. Almost never again you will see that roots of a polynomial form a group. It is very special to this particular polynomial x power n minus 1. So x power n minus 1 roots of that form a group which is a cyclic group. Any generator is called a primitive nth root of unity. Let us take one of them. What happens to sigma under what happens to zeta under sigma? Then I claim is also a primitive nth root of unity. Why is this? That is because note that if you have zeta i equal to 1, this implies sigma of zeta power i is also 1. Similarly, sigma of zeta i is 1 implies zeta i is 1 because sigma is an automorphism. That means it is an isomorphism of k star to k star. So, this implies that the least integer such that sigma power sigma zeta power that is 1 is the same whatever is the least integer for zeta which is n. So, zeta sigma zeta is also a primitive nth root of unity. But then by, by the analysis that we did earlier sigma zeta must be sigma zeta power i sigma where i sigma is a positive integer which is co prime to n right. So, sigma zeta must be a primitive nth root of unity that means it must be a power which is co prime to n. So, as an example let us say n equal to 8 then sigma zeta must be either zeta or zeta cube or zeta 4 or zeta 7 uh, sorry zeta 5. or zeta 7. It cannot be zeta square for example, because zeta square zeta square is not a primitive nth root eighth root of unity because zeta square power 4 is identity. So, sigma zeta cannot be this. So, now we, we have our map. So, define phi from Galois group to z mod nz star simply send sigma to i sigma. Because of what I noted here, i sigma is co prime to n, so it belongs to this. So, in the case of uh, 8, it will be up to z mod 8 z star. So, claim is that sigma uh, phi is a phi is an injective group homomorphism, but first why is, a, why is it a homomorphism? It is a group homomorphism. Okay. So, why is it a group homomorphism? It is a group homomorphism because if sigma and tau are in G, this is very similar to what we did in the Kummer extensions. There we used additive and here we use multiplicative notation. So, sigma tau of xi zeta is sigma of tau of xi zeta which is zeta power i tau which is zeta power i tau power i sigma because zeta goes to zeta power i sigma under sigma. So, zeta power i tau goes to zeta power i tau power sigma which is zeta power i tau i sigma. Earlier we had i tau plus i sigma there. There the target group was a additive group. So, that worked then. So, that means phi of sigma tau is i, I tau times i sigma or i sigma times i tau which is phi of sigma times phi of tau. So, that is the required property right because here operation is multiplication. So, it is a group homomorphism 
and finally why is it 1 1 it is 1 1 because suppose phi of sigma is 1 which is the additive which is the identity in z mod nz star multiplicative identity. So, that means sigma of xi is uh, sigma of zeta is zeta power 1. But then remember I should have mentioned this earlier note that k is f zeta because k is a splitting field of x power n minus 1 and we just argued that or we argued earlier in the video that zeta generates all the roots. Right? So, if sigma fixes zeta, sigma fixes every alpha in k because of course, it fixes f, it fixes zeta. So, it fixes every polynomial in zeta that means sigma is identity. So, therefore, kernel of phi is identity implies phi is 1 1. So, phi is a, an injective homomorphism from um, Galois group of k over f to z mod nz star. Okay. So, that I will make one or two remarks and then we will stop. So, the first remark is that hence this shows that if k f f n k are above as are as above then gal k over f is an abelian extension right as i remarked this is what i wanted to do earlier because z mod nz star is abelian z mod nz star is abelian because integers multiplication of integers is uh, commutative hence multiplicative integer multiplication of integers modulo n is commutative so and g is a subgroup of g is isomorphic to a subgroup of an abelian group so it's abelian so that is good so cyclotomic extensions are abelian so by the way i, I should define this i'll write down at the end but k over f is called a k over f is called cycle a cyclotomic extension i should have really defined this but it is in fact nth cyclotomic extension of f so what really this is saying is that so cyclotomic extensions are are abelian Second remark is the map phi, the map phi in the theorem which is uh, an injective group homomorphism need not be an isomorphism. In other words, it need not be um, a surjective map because if you take f equal to r and n equal to I mean any n, so then k is either r or I mean most of the time in fact k is c because if you take x power n minus 1 the x, this is r if n equal to 1 and 2 and k equal to c if n is greater than equal to 3 right because uh, you, you have only primitive square root and first root of 1 in r every other prim primitive nth root of uh, 1 is a non real complex number. So, the map to z mod nz star cannot be an isomorphism for uh, n I think greater than 8 or something because this order is 1 or 2 and this order is very soon after some time I think it will be at least 3. So, order is at least 3 or more clearly if you take f equal to c k equals c because c already contains all primitive nth roots of unity c is algebraically closed. So, Galva k over c is identity of course, it sits inside z mod nz star, but this 
can't be an isomorphism can't be surjective for n greater than 3 i think right so see z mod nz star the target group doesn't keep track of which how big k is compared to f so clearly this can't be in general an isomorphism because this z mod nz star keeps growing but k over f can be small as in these two examples k equal to r and k equal to c i hope that's clear so the groups k galva k over f are very small trivial in fact when k equal to c and a group of order 2 when k equal to f equal to r and n equal to i mean for large n but z mod nz star is a big group but next theorem which i'll prove next class next theorem shows that phi is in fact an isomorphism when f is q which is going to be crucial for us okay which is a nice structural result for cyclotomic extensions of uh, q okay so this is something that we'll prove in the next video so let me stop now and in the next video we'll prove this theorem learn a little bit more about cyclotomic extensions and after that we'll get to the the main uh, focus of this whole course which is solving polynomials by radicals thank you